Hello. Today's video is about those who use Christianity as a way to justify abuse. Many people I've spoken with were abused under the guise of Christianity. Parents abuse their children because they think Proverbs 13.24, which basically says spare the rod, spoil the child, means parents have the right to beat their children. They're also often the same parents who claim their children aren't honoring them because they refuse to tolerate the abuse. There are also plenty of husbands who demand blind obedience from their wives because Ephesians 5.22 says wives should submit to their husbands. There are even those active in their church who abuse other church members. Some are sexually abusing children, others ostracize members for not fitting their ideal of what they should be and more. There are so many things wrong with these situations. Personally, I believe that as wrong as abuse is when it's done using God as a justification or as a way to lure a victim in, that somehow makes it even worse. That's because this person in this situation not only has a fallout of abuse to deal with, but also is going to have a lot of spiritual damage as well. They may believe God doesn't care about them, or maybe that he just doesn't even exist because of what happened to them. That's how I felt. My mother went through a phase when I was a teenager of telling me she knew she was going to heaven when she died because she was just such a good person. I, however, was so terrible to her that I was destined for hell. I thought no God could exist to let me go through what I was going through, but if he did, I clearly wanted no part of him if he was truly like this. Also, it seems to me when people twist scripture around, if you look at the Bible, somewhere there is at least one nearby verse that clearly, clearly proves their interpretation is wrong. Look at Ephesians 5.22 for a minute. Yes, it says wives well, should submit to their husbands. But it also says in the verse immediately before that that a couple should admit, submit to each other. It clearly isn't one-sided, but you won't hear an abusive husband mention Ephesians 5.21. The same goes for abusive parents who claim their children aren't honoring them. The Bible also mentions in Ephesians 6.4 and Colossians 3.21 that parents shouldn't provoke their children. Truly toxic, abusive narcissistic people will use the Bible or the label Christian to justify their wicked, wicked behavior. To combat this, you need to know the Bible at least a bit. Nowhere in there does it justify any form of abuse. If you have any doubts, do your research with a good concordance or go on the internet. It won't take you long to see how wrong the abuser is. People also claim they're Christian that can be underestimated. So people will feel safe with them, or if they're on the fence about something, they may think it's okay because this person said they're a Christian. Most people hear someone say they're a Christian and somehow these, these people are impervious to mistakes or bad behavior. Nothing could be further from the truth. Everyone makes mistakes for one thing. If we didn't, we wouldn't need Jesus. And for another thing, no true believer is going to be deliberately abusive towards anyone. Rather than take someone on their word, observe a person's behavior. Any true Christian's behavior should show that they are doing their best to live a good, godly life. Sure, they make mistakes, but they at least quickly try to fix them. If they've hurt someone, it isn't done intentionally, and they are fast to apologize and change their behavior so it doesn't happen again. There are plenty of wolves in sheep's clothing out there looking for innocent victims. Remembering the points in this video can help you to avoid them. Thank you for watching my video.